Read this. Subject lines that command attention. Today's presentation focuses on how you can write more compelling subject lines for your email, your blog posts, and even social media. My name is Lorraine Ball and I'm going to be your presenter today. I own a marketing company called Roundpeg and we work every day with businesses on their digital marketing campaigns, testing and refining messaging that starts with a great headline or a great subject line. So why do subject lines matter so much? Well, at the core, marketing is really about results. And those results may include clicks or downloads, visits to your store, reservations and appointments, or phone calls. When you conduct a marketing strategy, whether it's a marketing campaign, whether it's social media, digital marketing, or email, what you're looking for is for customers to take that next step. It would be great if the next step was immediately to buy from you or make a donation, but often they have to kind of have that interim step. And your marketing needs to move them through that sales funnel so that they eventually get to revenue or donations. And all of that activity starts with getting their attention. And so particularly with email, but definitely social media as well, you are battling the now, later, or never. Because if someone sees your message, you want them to take action now. You want them to open the email or click on the social media post. Because we both know if they think, oh, I'll get to it later, it's never going to happen. And so your objective is to always be in the now category. And you have an added challenge because your consumers have a very limited attention span. They're scrolling through their inbox, they're scrolling through their news feed, and you've got less than two seconds to get their attention. And you have to do it really with your first two words. Sure, you can have a great subject line that's five or six words, but if I'm skimming down a list of emails, if the first two words of that subject line don't jump out at me, you've lost me, and you're going to miss an opportunity to get that viewer, that prospective customer, to take action today. Great subject lines demand attention. They make you smile and they pique your curiosity. I loved this particular headline on this newsletter. Stir crazy? It was talking about an activity for dogs and particularly in the winter, um, having a little bit of fun. And so the words kind of got my attention. I wasn't quite sure what this newsletter was about. Here's another example. Don't graduate hungry. It was an email for a catering company promoting their services for graduation parties. And I loved the don't graduate hungry. It's not something you would normally think about. It's not words that you would put together. And it kind of made me smile and it piqued my curiosity. Something to think about, particularly as we're talking about email marketing, it isn't just the subject line. It is important that you are sending permission-based emails to people who recognize your name or the name of your company and that it arrives at a convenient time. And in other seminars, we address some of these topics, how to generate a permission-based list and how to um, test for time, the appropriate time. But today we're going to focus on compelling subject lines. And as you're thinking about your subject line, you want to be clear and maybe a little bit clever. Half moon yoga, agro yoga at 11,000 feet. You in? 
I'm not quite sure what agro yoga is, but it's pretty obvious that this is a yoga class. And I am intrigued by that 11,000 feet. So in a few words, they've caught my attention. The first two words are something I'm not familiar with, but I'm interested. And the other thing that you have an opportunity to do, and you really need to think about this, because a significant number of people are opening your email on a mobile device. They will see not just your subject line, Agro Yoga at 11,000 feet, they will see the teaser text. If you don't set the text, normally most of the... Um, Mobile tools will immediately display the first line of your email. Well, for many of us, the first line of the email is, if you can't read this email, click here to see it in your browser. Well, that doesn't really help sell your story. And so as you are developing your email, pay attention to the teaser text and set that as well. Agro Yoga at 10,000 feet, aspire to a higher ground, join us for. And so now I know this is a class for the Half Moon Yoga Studio. As you're working on your headlines in email newsletters, you want to avoid spam-like terms. Constant Contact, which is the tool that we use, has a nice spam filter where it will identify if you're using spam terms. But another way to do this is to test it, is to send the email and see if you're ending up in the spam folder. And spam terms will surprise you. A lot of them seem like perfectly innocuous phrases. Words that you might be inclined to use in your subject line to communicate a sense of urgency, to communicate that you're offering a special offer or that people can save money. Maybe they can win a prize. Maybe you're talking about ways to improve their credit. Well, you just, again, want to drive that sense of urgency. The problem with all of these words is they have been overused by spammers. You can actually research, just do a quick search on Google for a list of common spam phrases to avoid. Or again, if you're using Constant Contact, there's a little spam check button. The next thing that I really want to kind of focus on, and then we're going to switch and really talk about some very specific examples and strategies to write headlines, is that a bad headline is a missed opportunity. This week in cycling news, no kidding, I know it's this week. I know this is cycling news because the email is coming from the Southside Cycling Center. Don't waste your subject line telling me something I already know. I assume when that happens that the rest of the email is going to be equally unimportant. As you're writing your headlines, remember that size matters. So you want your headline to be clear, clever, and short. Why short? Because desktop and mobile devices will truncate your headlines. 53% of all email right now is opened on a cell phone. All I see are maybe 30 to 40 characters. The rest of the headline is hidden. So if you don't catch my attention in the 30 to 40 characters and the beginning, you've lost me. While some research shows that 6 to 11 words fit best on mobile and desktop devices, testing by Constant Contact and other email marketing companies has shown that 4 to 7 words have the greatest response. And so you want to really try to keep your subject line in that 4 to 7 word range. And then don't forget the first 11 to 18 words of the pre-header text so you've got that little teaser that shows up as well. So subject line tips. Let's really get into the meat of this. 
there are a lot of different ways that you can go with your subject line. One is an attractive offer. You want to be able to make it without being too cheesy, but if you're offering me something that I can't get anywhere else, um, attend a preview, be the first to get, be sure to incorporate your brand identity. And by that, what I mean <coughs> is that your brand voice, you have a style, a way of talking, um, when I read your brochures, when I read your social media updates, it all has a certain style and voice. Make sure that comes through even in your headlines. For example, Round Peg, we tend to be a little bit sarcastic, sometimes a little bit flip, and sometimes in your face. So I can do headlines that maybe some of my competitors would be uncomfortable with. I can... Um, say things that might seem a little bit outrageous, but it fits with our branding. Now, I have a friend who runs a company, and he's even more out there than we are, and I read his headlines, and I kind of cringe, and then I'm like, you know what? The people that appreciate that sense of humor are going to be great clients for him. You can use a strategy where you create a hint of mystery, where you allude to something but don't really tell me the answer. And so now I have to open your email. You see that a lot in clickbait headlines on social media. This mom thought she was doomed and then this happened. And you're like, what? What happened? And you click on it to find out. Ask questions or promise answers. A lot of people use the question strategy, things like, do you need more of this? Do you want more of that? Do you uh, think you can do more? And or why do people want to do this? Or why does this work? Or how does this work? And, they, and that's a technique that's been around for a while. Talking to a friend of mine who works for a local newspaper, she argues that instead of asking the question, turn it around and promise the answer. Instead of saying, do you want more sales? Discover how to get more sales. Do you want to increase this? Learn to increase that. And so instead of asking the question that you assume everyone is going to say yes to, promise that if they read whatever it is you're promoting, they're going to get an answer. Create a sense of urgency. Registration, um, special registration expires today. Discount pricing, good for one day. Reserve your seat before they're gone. Create that sense that I have to open this now or I'm going to miss out. Entertain, warn, inform. Again, make people smile. Make them, prepare them for what's going to be an enjoyable read. And write like a pro. We're going to talk about some literary strategies that really work well in headlines. Personalize. One of the things that we know, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it and show you how to do this, is that the more personal, the more you can make me feel that this message is for me, the more likely I am to open it. So you need a retirement plan is not nearly as, uh, is nearly as effective as if you're a baby boomer, you need this retirement plan. If you're a millennial, it's not too early to start thinking about your retirement plan. In both of those instances, you have to know a lot about your audience. You have to be working from a segmented list so you send the right messages to the right people. Another way to personalize is by using the person's name. 
And to do this, all you need is their name in your database. When people see their name, they're going to stop and pay attention. Another strategy that we can't resist is what's called the top appeal. Seven best this, three biggest that, five most this. We can't resist the idea that there's a best or a right answer out there, and if I open this email, I'm going to get it. Numbers are also magical in general. Really big numbers and really small. I know you're not going to solve the problems of the universe with that one email, but I figure, whatever, I got a few minutes, I can give it a shot. It's worth trying to find out if you really do have an answer I can use. And really big numbers, a hundred ways to do X, Y, or Z. Well, I don't need all hundred, but surely there's something there that will make sense for me. Sense of urgency. Phrases like 12 seats left, offer ends at midnight, really making me feel like if I don't open and I don't act today, I'm going to miss out. Asking questions, as I showed you on the last one, do you need more prospects or here's how to find more prospects. Asking and answering questions. Exclusive appeal. Creating the impression that not everybody is going to get this offer. Um, this offer limited to our top 100 students. Something that lets people feel like they're getting something that everyone else is not. And this idea of staying in the know. Um, this message also borders on that negative. 13 signs you're budgeting wrong. Um, three things your competitors don't know. Giving people advanced information, giving them data that helps them do something or learn something or just makes them feel like they're kind of on the inside. I mentioned personalization on that last slide. Why personalize? The research says that emails with a personalized subject line are 26% more likely to be open. So if you can personalize and get people's attention, there's a really good shot that they're going to open your email. And personalized email messages, when you use that same personalized strategy inside the email, they have higher click-through rates and higher conversions. People just believe that somehow this information is specifically for them. And it can be really easy to use if we're using a good third-party email tool. Now, we use Constant Contact, and I'm sure that MailChimp and a lot of the other tools have a similar way of doing this, but I'm going to show you how you can do it with CC. Here's the initial subject line. It's booster shot time. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. But you can insert, you can push this add personalization button, and it inserts this little bit of HTML code. If you have a first name for your contact in your database, it will pull the first name. If it doesn't, you can put a little text here that will appear. It's not going to be as personalized, but it's better than nothing. And so here they've chosen to replace the fallback text with the word dog owner. And now, here's what it looks like. In the preview, hi, first name or dog owner, it's booster shot time for your dog. Well, the headline's a little bit long now, but you've got that personalization right up front. When you preview the email, this is what you'll see. When you send the email, here's what Lee sees. Hi, Lee, it's booster shot time for your dog. So, 
And if Lee, if this person isn't in your database, they are, you don't have their first name, you'll see, hi, dog owner. This is going to be incredibly effective. And this tells you that you really want to have um, a permission-based list that at least has people's first names. And it's worth collecting that information to get higher response rates and higher interaction with your emails. I talked about top appeal and I mentioned bottom appeal. Here are a couple more examples. Top three reasons, top five priorities, top seven concerns. Three worst mistakes. Two ways to finish in last place. And five things you didn't know. So you can see with all of these different phrases, what makes the top and bottom appeal work is the number. And it doesn't have to say top, top, top. It can say best, biggest, most. It's just something that makes me feel like these are the ideas, the resources, the tools that I have to have. And the bottom appeal should create a little sense of dread that if I don't open this email, I could really miss something that will really impact my performance. I mentioned literary techniques. There's something called the onomatopoeia. There are words in the English language that when I read the word, I hear the sound. Boom, crackle, pop. And even as I say them, boom, you can almost hear that explosion. And so when you read it in your head, you actually hear those sounds as well. And they can be very effective in subject lines because people do hear the sound. Illusions. Illusions are also referred to as cultural references, and they work really well if your audience recognizes the cultural reference. The challenge is that illusions and cultural references have frequently have a limited time. When I see where, where's the beef, I remember the Wendy's commercial with Clara Keller, the senior citizen who would drive her little car up to the drive-up window. She'd order a hamburger at some competing hamburger place and open the giant bun and there'd be this tiny little hamburger in there and she would howl in this just crackly old voice, where's the beef? And every time she did it, people all across America would laugh. And that phrase became synonymous with the idea that what I was had just purchased didn't really live up to my expectations. The problem is that there's an entire generation who have never seen Clara Peller. They don't hear her howl or cackle when they read that expression. And so the illusion doesn't necessarily work as well with a younger audience. Alliteration. This is one of my favorite. It just happens to be how my brain works. Um, there's something about having all of the words in your title start with the same letter. It creates a little bit of a sing-song rhythm in the reader's head. So seven simple solutions to say that I do this with a lot of the cookbooks, that the digital cookbooks we do for one of our clients. So you get things like wonderful winter warmers or savory seasonal soups. It's kind of a little tongue twister, um, but the alliterations work because they're a little bit outside the norm and as you read them, you sort of respond to that. And finally, there's this thing called chunking. Um, you, you do it, probably all of us do it when there are a list of things that we have to remember. and We sort of repeat them in our head over and over again. And there are things that kind of go together, but maybe they do or don't. And this one, this lions and tiger, lions, tigers, and, and the Springfield bears, oh my, is really a combination between that three idea chunking and the illusion back to the Wizard of Oz. So that headline works on two levels. 
Okay, let's take another look at how you might use some of these techniques to improve some of your subject lines. So you've got a basic subject, subject line, June promotion. How can you use sound effects or the onomatopoeia phrases to improve it? Splish, splash, oh, the prices we've slashed. You can kind of hear the water, and if this is a pool supply company, I think this is really fun. It also has a little bit of that alliteration going on. Cha-ching! You can hear the ring of the cash register, and I might do cha-ching, spring savings today, or spring sale now, or save now. Illusions. Who let the dogs out? Pet shots this Saturday. I can hear the uh, the Rasta band saying, doing the who, who, who let the dogs out? And I can kind of hear the music in my head when I see that. So for me, this headline works. But if you've never heard that band or never heard that song, it's not going to be as compelling. Fido's got 99 fleas, but fleas. Fido's got 99 problems, but fleas ain't one. Now, I'm going to confess, I don't recognize what the 99 problems refers to. And so this illusion is not necessarily as effective as it could be. It's still a fun headline. But again, you got to know your audience if you're going to use illusions. Alliterations. Make mom's morning miraculous. You get that rhythm going with the headlines. Another way to do it, cards, candy, and one cozy couch. So if I'm sending flowers or candy to mom, that totally works for me. It also has a little bit of that chunking going on because there's three distinct things that you're bringing together in one headline. Instead of sign up for summer camp, ho-hum, archery, fencing, and sailing, camp 2018. You lead with three of the programs that kids are going to be excited about. Maybe these are three new programs the camp is offering this year. Kids love it. Parents dream about it. Registration is open. The headline is fun because as a parent, I read it and I'm like, kids love it. What do my kids love? Parents dream about it. Yeah, what am I thinking about? I probably would do registration open as part of my teaser text because I think it's going to be truncated. But again, you're using that chunking idea, those three separate um, concepts that you're bringing together to create a story in your headline. Where do you find inspiration? Where do you find great ideas for your headline? They're everywhere. Read the news. Look at newspaper headlines and magazine headlines and covers on magazines. As you're standing in the supermarket and you're staring at the magazines, pay attention to the ones that jump out at you, the ones that you're like, oh, yeah. That's a cool headline. It caught my attention. Look at what others are doing. Look at what your competitors are doing. Read their social media posts. Subscribe to their newsletters. Um, search results headlines. Go to Google and type in a phrase related to your business and see what comes up. Look at the articles and the headlines that appear and look for strategies and things that they're doing, look at the headlines, pay attention to the headlines that you look at first and ask yourself, why, what was it about that headline that I reacted to? Blog titles. Look at a blog, a company that does a lot of blogging and look at the titles of those blogs and see which ones work and which ones don't. Look at Twitter and look at the tweets that get engagement, the ones that have lots of likes and shares and go viral, and see what it is that they put in that 140 characters that created interest. And 
study listicles. Look at BuzzFeed, Upworthy, Mashable, and look at how they use that top appeal and bottom appeal and clickbait teasers to sort of suck you in. These publications are the masters of great headlines. And then, if you think you know what you're doing, test your alternatives. We did this at Roundpeg. We actually did three different subject lines and three different preheader texts that kind of matched the headline. We divided our entire list into three separate segments, and we sent them at the same time to see which one got the highest open rate. No time for email? That's like saying you got no time for sales. It's a little abrasive. It's a little bit in your face. But again, our community, that, that's okay. I wouldn't recommend that for everybody. Version two, it's time to rethink email. Your email marketing needs to be refreshed. Learn how. And the last one kind of going with the negative bottom appeal, is your email failing? Save time and stay out of the spam folder. We could have predicted the results. Um, version one was definitely our most popular. It is not something I would recommend for a lot of companies because again, it's it's a little abrasive. Um, version two, ver version three worked fairly well, and version two got a giant yawn because it was nothing, nothing really compelling. And so I would recommend doing these kind of tests on a regular basis. And now Constant Contact has done something that I just love. We did this manually. We divided the list and we ran the campaign. Constant Contact now has an A-B testing option. And so when you get ready to send an email, what you do is you can set up an A-B test. You can do two totally different subject lines. Um, they recommend uh, testing with each of, uh, with, with at least a thousand contacts on each one. But if your list isn't that big, go smaller. In this instance, what they did is they divided their list into thirds. They said 30%, 30%, and then the balance. And so what they did is they ran the test with the two headlines, and then they said, okay, let's go 48 hours before we decide a winner. So let's see, um, you know, because sometimes emails get opened in the first or second day, and sometimes the numbers change a little bit. And then after this period, these last 34% of the people will get the better headline. So what that means is that 60% of your audience gets your better headline. And so then you can see over time, oops, sorry, you, you can see over time they had a total of 1,200. They sent, well, actually they sent 1,200 and they sent 400 and 400. So they sent 800 emails, one got 300 opens, one got 199 opens, and then they had their last 400, so they sent a total of 1,200. Oh, okay, there's the number. There were 2,000 uh, recipients. Then they sent 1,200 more, and so they got a hot, much higher open rate. If they had sent everybody this email, they would have had a fairly low open rate. This got huge response. And so by testing, you can find better headlines. I want to show you just really quickly how the preview pane and the preheader text work. The preview pane is for desktop. The preheader text is for mobile. So preheader text, again, on mobile devices, you get your subject line and that teeny little bit of pet text that pops up. And so you have an opportunity, start building trust. This is what it looks like on your email when it's open. This is what it looks like before they open it. 
Well, what if they're opening it on a desktop and not mobile? Well, in that sense, you really want to be sure that your preview pane is interesting. A preview pane will display the top half of your email. What's wrong with this email? Well, I'm in the top half of the email and there's no call to action. The invitation to do something is buried down at the bottom of the email. So if your audience is opening your email on mobile or desktop, get those buttons higher on the page. There's your start building trust and you can see it right there and that's fine. But get that button higher on the page. And finally, you want to, um, as you're setting up your campaigns, remember to customize them. The default on a lot of systems is simply campaign number on this time or date. The problem with that is that if you leave that when you go to look at your data and your statistics, you can't remember which campaign is which. So make sure you rename your campaigns something that will be relevant to you. Then, after the email is sent, instead of having data that looks like this, you end up with data. Oops that looks like this, where you can see which emails each of these bars refers to you, and you can go, oh yeah, that one has got a really high open rate, but it only went to 10 people. So you can mentally go, that one is not as relevant as some of the others. Writing good subject lines really and truly breaks down into four simple tests. Brainstorming alternatives testing them, testing the different alternatives, testing them on mobile and desktop, remembering your preview pane and pre-header text to really grab the attention of your audience and to monitor your progress. If you are not sure whether your headlines are really doing the trick, request an audit. Respond to the follow-up email you get from watching this program with a request that we take a look at one of your campaigns. And if you have questions, now's a great time to reach out to us.